Nigeria Korea Friendship Institute appreciates Governor Bello over salary scale approval. Court sacks MC Oluomo led packs. Garage Committee reinstates RTEAN. India's population to overtake China by mid-2023. Argentine court confirms it to face trial over Maradona's death. This is the MLC TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Joshua Adenoy. Thanks for joining us. A socio-political group, the pan Ninja Delta Forum, PANDEF, has urged the leadership of the All Progressives Congress, APC, to zone the position of Senate President to the South-South Geopolitical Zone in the interest of equity and fairness. In a statement by the group's spokesman, Ken Robinson, Pandev said it is only proper for the ruling party, which has a majority of senators elect, to zone the highly converted position to the South-South Zone. Pandev, which is led by an elder statesman, Pa Edwin Clark, argued that the last time someone from the present South-South states occupied the office of the Senate President was late Senator Joseph Wyas during the Second Republic, 1979 to 1983. Pandev implores the President-elect Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, along with other key stakeholders of the APC and all Senators-elect of all parties, to support the seeding of the incoming Senate presidency to the South-South Zone. The National Industrial Court of Nigeria, NICN, sitting in Lagos, has voided the Lagos State Government's appointment of a caretaker committee for managing the parks and garages in the state. Justice Maureen Esowe ordered the reinstatement of the operation of the Road Transport Employers Association of Nigeria, RTEAN, in Lagos State. The judge held that the state government's suspension of the National Union's operation and setting up of a caretaker committee was illegal and unconstitutional. She held that the government and the police should have intervened by arresting and prosecuting those behind any fracas purportedly involving union members and not imputing into the dispute. The court also restrained the state government from further interfering in the operations of the union's escorts and ordered the police to refrain from intimidating the union's officers to remove all barricades it imposed around their sectariat and to grant them unfettered access to their offices. Counsel for the state government, Adebayo Harun, contended that the government neither violated the law nor dissolved the national body's operations in the state, but had sought to maintain law and order by creating the ad hoc committee when violence ensued between the unions. The Kogi State Council of the Nigeria Union of Journalists, NUJ, has expressed disapproval of the insinuations by politicians that journalists in Kogi State compromised the conduct of the just-concluded gubernatorial primary election of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, in the state. Addressing a news conference in Lokoja, the state's capital, chairman of the state council of the NUJ, Adeiza Momojimo, said journalists in the state performed their duties as expected during the conduct of the primary election in the state. Our attention has been drawn to some reports in the media by politicians since the conduct of APC governorship primary in Kogi, trying to condemn the exercise and in a way impugning on the integrity of journalists and our various media houses. They claimed no election held anywhere that the results were cooked and announcement made. I want to put it on record that our members, that is journalists, went to the feed on the election day and monitored the process across the state. Audio, videos, and pictorial evidence of the exercise were gotten from the feed by journalists while monitoring the process, and reports were sent to various media houses based on their observations on the feed. 
to report places where voting started early and some other places where they were delayed in arrival of materials and officials, as it is typical of Nigerian election. The Journalist Union's chairman advises politicians to use the prescribed ways of seeking redress whenever the outcome of an election are not favorable to them, rather than resorting to blackmail and other illegal means. Having monitored and reported the process in our media outlets, journalists converge at the coalition center at the APC Secretariat in Lokoja and stayed up to 3 a.m. in the morning of Saturday to also cover the coalition and declaration of results. For any aggrieved politician to now assert that all these sacrifices done by journalists amounted to colluding to declare corporate results is not just far from the truth, but showing disrespect for journalists and their media organizations. For us at the Kogi NUJ, we stand by the reports of journalists as published in their media houses on the conduct of the election. We want to use this medium to advise our politicians to use the prescribed ways of seeking redress whenever the outcome of elections are not favorable to them, rather than resorting to blackmail and attempting to pull everything down. I wish to also use this opportunity to all journalists in the state to continue to hold the ethical standards of the professions throughout the election season and beyond. To the aspirants who lost at primaries, let them know that journalists are not and will never be their problems as they go in search of solution to whatever must have happened to them during the exercise. Director, Nigeria Korea Friendship Institute, NKFI, William Charles Oluwatoyi, has expressed his profound appreciation to Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello for approving the tertiary institution salary scale for the staff of the institute after over nine years. Williams, in a statement, noted that Governor Bello has continued to show his keen interest in education, particularly the growth of science, technology, and vocational sequences, and has again proven his concern for the welfare of workers. He explained that upon his assumption as director of the institute, he was bent on making impact and one area of interest was the improvement of staff's welfare and the ratification of certain anomalies, one of which was that staff of the institute who were on secondment from their various ministries were placed on permanent employment as staff of the institute. Williams described the governor's gesture as unprecedented and prayed God to continue to strengthen him in all ramification. The Kogi State Polytechnic, in collaboration with the CV Pact consultancy firm, organized a three-day workshop held at the Federal University Lokoja, Kogi State. The workshop, which was focused on commitment to redesigning, improving performance and productivity of staff within the Nigeria economy, had registry staff of the Polytechnic in attendance. The resource persons and principal consultant at the workshop, Professor Stephen Omodia Monday, advised participants to exhibit the knowledge gained at the training for improved productivity in their various offices. Our reporter, Richard Toluyemi, has the detail. Professor Omadia said the need for effective training for staff of the Kogi State Polytechnic cannot be overemphasized and commended the management for their efforts. This feat is worth commending on the part of Kogi State Polytechnic. Uh, the focus of the Polytechnic is actually to serve as an interventionist institution in terms of transforming higher education uh, within the Nigerian state and as a matter and by extension the continent of Africa. Now if you go through Kogi State Polytechnic, you agree with me that there is physical transformation, you know, of the institution. And most of the programs I must 
be sincere, are ICT driven. But there is also a need to have an effective an effective training on the part of the staff, you know, that are saddled with the functions of implementing the vision and mission of the Polytechnic. And that is the import of this training workshop. Why commending Kogi State's government for a top-notch support to the development of education in the state. The consultants enjoin participants to use the knowledge gained at the training for a greater productivity and betterment of the society. Uh, well, we know the resources are curtailed, especially when it comes to uh, state-financed or government-financed institutions. But uh, I think, and the state government and the federal government are also of the conception that they need to raise the bar, especially as it pertains to education, you know, both at the basic level and at the tertiary level. For Kogi state government, what they are doing is quite, is, is, is quite, it's quite commending. And this in itself is manifesting in what is obtainable at uh, the Kogi State Polytechnic and of course at the Prince Abubakar Audu University. Director Kogi State Polytechnic Lokoja Usman Ogbo said higher productivity is expected from the participants stressing that the institution has invested more towards ensuring the training see the light of the day. To do is to be more committed, pay more rapt attention, take knowledge from here, and we expect higher productivity in the assignment. If you invest in somebody, you need to get gain from them, and our gain from them it should be higher productivity. The registrar of the Polytechnic, Aye Ton Sunday, and the faculty officer from the Faculty of Social Sciences, Ayuba Adinoi Yaya, both explain that the training will go a long way at impacting all participants positively. It enhances the behavior at work and at the same time it instills discipline and culcate discipline into them, in, into them. And at the same time, we want to use this opportunity to thank the director and the management of Kogi State Polytechnic for organizing this training workshop. Well, it will have a lot of impact. It's, we're talking about capacity development here. So the capacity level determines the service delivery. So with, uh, after the end of this program, I instructed that uh, the participants will be a renewed person and uh, it will increase the productivity, obviously. Because what we see as administration is a culmination or aggregation of the individual input into the system. And when the individuals are well baked, when the individuals are versatile, when the individuals are well informed and well positioned to carry out their tasks, you agree with me that the result will be a flourishing system. A resource person, Agnes Umadi, and a participant, Comfort Omadio, from the registry department both appreciated the management of the Polytechnic for organizing the training. The impact I intend for them to create one that they should tend, especially now that the world is tending towards digital using of computer. You know, in the old, in the, in the old days, the, the, the normal way we do things is using the typewriter. I don't know if you remember, they would eat it like this and it would come. But now we don't do all that anymore. We use, the, we use the system, the computer system, where you type, you can save your work, you have this, you have floppy disk. All that, we've gone beyond that. Even now, these days, you don't even need to use disk. People store their information in the cloud. Anytime you want it, you can always retrieve it. Registry as a unit in the university, we deal more with storage of information, storage of records, storage of documents. We don't need to use those our old days. Now we care ourselves into it. If peradventure, maybe participants of this training, some of them are still doing things in the old way, we, we tend to bring them, bridge them into this new way of doing things and how they can maximize this opportunity. 
so that they go with the trends. I just want to thank the management for taking our time to bring us here to get refreshed. At least we've learned a lot about uh, minute keeping and filing in the registry. And by the grace of God, they will be improved services from our own and after everything. And then it's like train the trainee. So there are some new staffs in the office. So whatever we've learned here, we intend to train those that are upcoming. Other participants at the training promise to share with all that knowledge gained at the event. I am Richard Ayokomi Toluyemi, reporting for MLC TV. The compound of the Uhi of Okemwe, His Royal Highness Ahmed Tijani Mohammed Anaje, was a beehive of activities as both Muslims and non Muslims in the area joined the traditional ruler to observe iftar, an act of breaking fast during the Ramadan. There was enough for all and sundry to eat and drink, as the people described the Uhi of Okenwehi's gesture as the first of its kind in the area. The traditional ruler, who is also the vice chairman of Ibira Area Traditional Council, calls for oneness and love among the people of the area. Our reporter, Joy Dada, has the detail. <laughs> Those that gathered to observe the iftar with Muhammad Anaje, who is also the patron council of Ulamao of Nigeria, Kogi Central Chapter, said the act of the traditional ruler is unprecedented, describing him as one with the heart of God. In an interview with some traditional rulers at the iftar, His Royal Highness Adamu Isa and Shaibu Ismaila Itopa said observing iftar with others promotes unity among the people. They described the gesture of Muhammad Anaje as the first of its kind in the history of the district and prayed Allah to reward his kind gesture towards others. It's a big achievement in the sense that it never happened in a kind way before. It's happening for the first time. This signifies unity. If you look around, you will see Muslim, non-Muslim, here, yeah, Christianity, making a fast with you. Put it all mighty Allah. And you give him more space, good life, long life, prosperity, any good thing in life. Similarly, Ahmad Tijani Farouk, who is one of the neighbors of the Ohi of Okenwehi, praised the traditional ruler for his commitment towards strengthening oneness among the people, calling on him to sustain such gesture. Showing the uh, spirit of oneness in Muslim, the spirit of unity, and uh, the spirit of uh, forgiveness that uh, is not in place. The host, His Royal Highness, the Ohi of Okenwehi, Ahmed Tijani Mohammed Anaje, appreciated the people for honoring his invitation and prayed to Allah to continually strengthen him to impact the lives of others positively. I decided to gather all my people in my domain, both uh, Christian and Muslim and uh, the traditional rulers, for us to for them to join me and uh, open my uh, mouth during the month of uh, Ramadan. This is something that we can do, including or to extend to non-Muslim people. So that is why we decided to to include uh, others. There was enough for all to eat and drink as they all offer prayers to Allah at the Ohi of Okenwe, his compound. Allah Akbar! I am Joy Dada, reporting for MLC TV. Nigerian women under the urges of Gender Strategy Advancement International, GSEI, took swipe on the federal government for continually paying lip service on the inclusion of women in the political space of Nigeria. Executive Chairman of the group, Adora Oyechere, 
said women have waited for so long to be given their rightful place, but the government has failed to accord them their rightful position, describing such developments as an incurable cancer that has eaten deep into the fabric of Nigeria's democracy. The GSAI executive chairman said, Nigeria as a country has immense potentials but lacks participation of women in politics, adding that it is unfortunate that women are still underrepresented in the parliament even when they bring unique perspectives into politics. Adora further argued that the House of Representatives speakership position should be ceded to women to start balancing the equation of gender equality in Nigeria's political space. We go on a short break. We'll be right back. A suggestion in the motion from that first January to June that first 2023. Say aye. Aye. Those against any aye, seven. Do you know what it takes to lead? Do you understand what is politics? Do you have issues concerning the way we play politics? Do you have reservations about some political mugu? Do you want to serve or be served? Do you want to contest? Do you want to occupy any political office or be in charge of your world? All this and many more are what we discuss right here in the political arena. A program where we trash and arrange, condemn and commend, celebrate and blame all that play out in politics. Do not be told. Join me, you are not valuable, every Saturday by 7 p.m. to throw my light on why we play politics the way we do and how we can play it better. Political Arena, building a government of the people and for the people. Don't miss it. Welcome back. On politics, the People's Democratic Party PDP candidates Amadou Fintiri has emerged winner of the supplementary governorship election in Adamawa State. As announced by Professor Mohamed Mele, the state returning officer said Fintiri, who is the incumbent governor of the state, scored a total of 430,000. 861 votes to defeat the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Aisha Binani, who got 396,788. Following his victory, the presidential candidate of the PDP in the 2023 general elections, Atiku Abubakar, congratulated Fintiri on his re-election as the governor of the state. Atiku noted that the triumph of Governor Fintiri proves that good can overcome bad, describing it as a win for democracy. Recall that the INEC had on Sunday suspended coalition for the supplementary governorship election in Adamawa State after the embattled resident electoral commissioner, Hudu Yunusa Ari, announced APC's Aisha as the winner of the Saturday supplementary election. Ari's declaration was contrary to the provision of the Electoral Act. On crime, the police have sanctioned officers seen in a viral video assaulting an unidentified man in River State. The first public relations officer, CSP Olumuiwa Adejobi, announced this on his Twitter handle. He noted that one of the officers, Adejo Siaka, got his rank reduced from inspector to sergeant, while another officer, Sergeant Ndiwa Kupebari, who was also present at the scene, was severely reprimanded. Recall that in a viral video clip, a police officer, Siaka, holding his rifle, was seen beating a man with a cane and slapping him, while another officer, Kupebari, was also filmed pushing a lady into a car. On the foreign scene, India is poised to overtake China as the world's most populous nation with almost 3 million more people than its neighbor by the middle of this year. A release by the United Nations Population Funds explained that India's population by mid-year 2023 is estimated at 1.4286 billion against 1.4257 billion for China of 2.9 million fewer. The information placed United States at a distant third with an estimated population of 340 million as of the end of June.
in Africa, Khartoum's hospital have been thrown into chaos by explosions of violence between Sudan's two top generals. People have been unable to leave their home since Saturday as the two sides engaged in gun battle and bombarded each other with artillery and airstrikes. According to United Nations figures, more than 185 people have been killed and over 1,800 wounded since the fighting erupted. At the Ahmed Kwasin Children Hospital, medical staff were said to have evacuated all cases except the ones in the intensive care unit. They said supplies were running low, with doctors, nurses, patients and their relatives trapped inside for days as the Sudanese capital turned into a war zone. Joy Dada takes the entertainment segment from here. Anwar Film Mischief Festival is back for a second Pan-African edition. Simi's birthday, Adekule Gold makes special promises. Welcome to our entertainment world. I am Joy Dada. Following an impressive inaugural edition last year, the Festival for Independent Filmmakers has returned with an exciting 2023 lineup with 22 selections. Team, shoot the culture. This year's edition intends to tell stories that reflect and celebrate Africans' uniqueness in an innovative and global way. Film Rats founder Chukum Martin says the outfit is dedicated to promoting film education and documentation towards improving filmmaking in Africa. The official selections include documentaries and short films like The Imposter, Bese, Oguola, The Broken Mask, Samaria, and My Mamana Ashawo, among others. Still in Africa, a celebrated Nigerian singer, Adekule Gold, has reaffirmed his love for his wife, Simi, as she celebrates her 35th birthday. The singer took his wife to Marrakesh in Morocco to celebrate her birthday. Marrakesh is renowned for its opulence, five-star dining establishments, and upscale spas. Adekule Gold thanks Simi on his Instagram page for supporting him as he posted some stunning photos of Simi, promised to give her a good life as they continue to grow together in love. I am Joy Dada, reporting for MLC TV. Thanks for the update, Joy. And that is the size of our package for today. If you like what we are doing, do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV and MLC TV2. Instagram, MLC TV2021. Twitter, MLC TV1. For your event coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, advert placement, or sponsorship, Please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakite TV online on weekends to watch our various programs. Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sunday 6 p.m. Women's World, and Monday 9 a.m. The Opinion. It's Malakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please continue to be a brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Joshua Adenoy. Thanks for watching.